We are back, Astros fans, with another Astros prospect interview. This time we're interviewing Sean Dubin. He is a pitching prospect, and uh, uh, we're excited for another interview. And uh, let's go ahead and get this started right now. <laughs> Welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H Town Wheelhouse Chancy. We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on Twitter at Eric Talks Astros. You find the show at Locked On Astros. Your team every day. Brett, where can I find you at? They can find me at H Town Wheelhouse on Twitter and Instagram. They can find me at Stros411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive, always Stros. All right, we got a special guest, Sean Dubin. Uh, where can they find you on Twitter or are you on Twitter? No, I don't have a Twitter. Um, I only have an Instagram and a Snapchat, but my Instagram is MacDubs with uh, two S's. <laughs> Okay. All righty. So um, I know recently you were added to the Astros 40 man roster. Uh, so what does that mean? I know you had a great season with the Sugarland uh, Skeeters and what does it mean for you to be added to the 40 man roster that the Astros have that much confidence in you that they want you to uh, protect you from the uh, other 29 teams? Um, it's a really cool feeling, you know, it's just nice to get that kind of like reassurance from the organization, um, you know, but I'm stoked, you know, I'm, I'm excited, I'm ready to show everyone what I got, you know, I think uh, this year in Sugarland was a little bit of a, like a taste of it, um, you know, when I was healthy, so, you know, I'm really excited and uh, I'm ready for spring training. No, yeah, definitely, and I know, I know, Sean, you and I talked this last year at Sugarland, we got to just, you know, get to know each other. I got to talk to you kind of about some, some old nicknames, the whole bird's nest thing with your beard. <laughs> yeah. And just, I knew that there, there, there has always been a, there's always been a buzz about, about your arm. You're a, you're a, you're a hard throwing right hander. Um, you've had some struggles here and there, but you've really been able to fight through those and, and, you know, overcome those struggles. I remember several games that I was able to attend this year where you strike out five, six, seven batters, you know, you just have, you have it working. Um, one of, one of the um, guys that I talked to that like deals with the minor leagues and he looks at the minor leagues, he basically said he saw that, that your splits versus left-handed batters was like really good this year. Um, what, what pitchers have you had the most success with basically wiping the opposite handed hitters out with mostly and what, and what is your balance sequence? Like, like, is there like a go-to pitch that you're doing to, to knock out those left-handed batters or is there a sequence you found? Um, I think definitely it comes down to the sequence, you know, uh, absolutely. You know, um, you just got to make sure you're setting the guy up right. But especially um, since Fayetteville, you know, um, my curveball has really come a long way. And uh, that's really my go-to pitch against lefties. Um, you know, because the changeup is a little spotty here and there. You know, I'm working on the – the control and just command aspect of that. But I would say uh, like cutters inside on the hands and then dropping the curveball off it and then, you know, fastballs up and away. Nice. All right, Sean, I know that you're drafted by the Astros in 2018 in the 13th round. Uh, where were you when you found out you are drafted and did you know the Astros were going to draft you? Can you say that one more time? I didn't, I didn't hear that. Um, wh when you, I know you're drafted in 13th round in 2018. Where were mm -hmm. you when you're drafted? Uh, and when, where, uh, where were you when you found out you're drafted? And did you, did you know that the Astros drafted you? We're going to draft you. Yeah, I, I was back home, uh, back home here in New York, um, you know, Western New York. I happened to be with my family because, uh, you know, we were all sitting around early as soon as that third day started. And uh, we were just all sitting in the living room, you know, just like everyone checking their phones, waiting, waiting to see any like new news, you know, and um, to be able to share that moment with them was pretty special. Um, I had a couple of my friends here with me, too. So it was a really cool moment. And um, I was actually I don't want to say like surprised because I had talked to the Astros a little bit, but um, they weren't like one of the, the teams that were like heavily communicating with me prior to prior to the draft. Um, there was a couple others that I thought for sure, like. You know, it'd be like two, two or three teams. And then uh, I just got a call, like probably like 15 seconds before the pick saying that they were going to pick me. And 
you know, I was excited, especially coming off the World Series win. You know, it's a, it was a pretty cool moment. No, yeah, definitely. And so you've, I mean, since you've been in the organization, the Astros have known nothing but success. Um, and, you know, the Astros kind of had a knock going into the 2021 season where we had the one of the lowest rated minor league systems. But we've had some of the most, like, movement and 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 guys going up to the major league level from the minor leagues like your Jake Myers like Pete Solomon like guys that were your teammates this year and had great success we've got you we've got Brett Canine we've got Hunter Brown coming up Corey Lee I mean you guys are stacked the Skeeters are stacked for 2022 um but but for you as a player what what have you done to stay focused? Because when you go through ups and downs, when you see other guys and they're moving, I remember talking to you and you you were you were happy for Jake Myers. You guys are happy when each other has success. How do you stay focused on what you're doing and not get sidetracked by oh this guy's going and this guy you know what is what is your go to thing to keep you in sync? Um, my go to thing honestly, I just you know especially guys like Pete, guys like Jake, you know they're they're really good guys, and you see what happens when you mix, you know, a good person with, you know, someone who works their tail off all the time. So I, I continuously try to get better every throwing program. You know, I really try to focus on, you know, different release points, just making sure everyone, everything's dialed in. Um, and just seeing that movement of them going up there, um, it's almost like inspiring, you know, it's like, okay, like you could get a call at any time, you know, it's, um, you never really know when, when it's going to happen. So, just always try to be prepared, you know, and for me, I think the focal point is just making sure I get consistent work in every day with, with throwing release points, you know, spinning and everything. So um, that's what I would say. I, I know that you had a limited experience. No, actually you spent the whole season with, uh, I was looking at the wrong year, sorry. Uh, but you, you had a pretty good experience in uh, AAA with the Skeeters. You had 69 strikeouts and 49 innings. Is that pretty much what you are, um, a strikeout pitcher? Or would you consider yourself a finesse pitcher? What type of pitcher are you? I think uh, a strikeout pitcher. Um, I'm working on the finesse part of it. You know, if I can find some sort of balance between the two, you know, I feel like it would be very beneficial. Um, you know, O two, one two. You know, I like to let fastballs rip. You know, and sometimes can get a little, little hectic just trying to trying to gas it up. But um, if I could find that balance of just being able to, you know, take one or two miles an hour off and just you know paint a ball on the corner instead of just trying to blow it by him, um, definitely. Definitely would probably have more success like that. And, you know, those are conversations I've had with Bill Murphy. So it's just trying to find that balance. And, you know, and I think I'm on a good pace right now. So I have a question going into 2022. Since the Astros protected you from the Rule 5 draft, they have basically put their stamp of approval on you. Um, what have they indicated is their plan for you in 2022? Have they talked about call-up date? Have they talked about um, – the fact that, you know, there are some other guys who don't really have options, but you you probably have some options. Have they discussed their plan with you in 2022 as how they're going to use you, or does that put in the cart before the horse? Um, They haven't told me directly yet. You know, obviously, they just tell me to, uh, to you know, be ready, for the, be ready for the long season. You know, I would imagine hopefully I would get up there at some point this year and, you know, kind of I just want to do everything I can to make a splash on the scene, you know, and just – come out swinging, you know, prove to everyone that, you know, I deserve to be up there. But, um, but yeah, nothing like too concrete. Um, I'd imagine when, once we start to get a little closer to spring training, hopefully uh, I'll start to, to see it unfold a little bit. All right. So um, which opponent, which, uh, I guess, which AAA franchise was the most difficult to face this year? Because I, if I remember correctly, you didn't face a lot of teams this year. You kind of faced the same teams over and over again. Mm -hmm. Which team was the most difficult to pitch against? Um, for me personally, um, I think Albuquerque. Um, you know, they just seemed to to kind of be on a lot of the stuff I was throwing. And especially, you know, going there with the elevation, you know, obviously the ball – it moves a little different, but um, even at home, you know, like uh, I just found, you know, they're kind of like a gritty team. They'll follow, follow everything off, make you throw strikes. Um, but, but yeah, I would probably say them or the Dodgers, OKC. Those are top two. Yeah, I saw you um, pitch against the Dodgers, and you know, the Dodgers always always seem to hit really well. Of course, I got to see them before Kyber was uh, shipped to 
shipped to Washington in that in that big um, Scherzer Turner trade, which I was shocked that they did that. Um, you know, when I watch guys like Kyber Ruiz, when I watch guys like you get up there, I'm thinking Sean must be must have these six strikeouts. Why? Because he's probably been consuming built bars. Built bars are amazing. And let me tell you, this is what I want you all to do. Cyber Monday is coming up. And if it's and if it's past Cyber Monday, you just need to take this offer because it's still gonna work. Cause you're gonna have 20% off everything that's that's out there. The built bar flavor that just landed in time for Cyber Monday and this week is caramel almond delight. It's amazing. 150 calories, 17.9 grams of protein, and it's also they've also got these built bar puffs and white chocolate cheesecake, yummy protein, treat filled with marshmallow center covered with white chocolate, 140 calories, 17 grams of protein. Tis the season to save and give your taste buds the gift of Built Bar. That's right. Incredible tasting, new bars, 20% off everything. Head to Built.com. Use the promo code LOCK20 before it's too late. All right, Sean, I'm looking at your stats from both college and minors. So in the um... The college, you had a 4.06 ERA, and the minors, you had a 3.70 ERA. That's pretty impressive. Uh, I mean, what's been the biggest adjustment you've had to make from the uh, college level to the the um, pro baseball? Um, the biggest adjustment is probably just, you know, just trying to stay consistent with everything, you know. In, uh, in, in college, you're kind of more on, like, a, a solidified rotation, you know. If you're, like, a Friday guy or a Saturday guy, you know, you, you just – automatically like start to get hyped up for those days once they start to approach but uh obviously with the minor league season you know um especially the way we run tandems and everything you know things can change and just making sure that you're always ready you know especially uh you know the day or two before your actual outing you know anything can happen so um also just just trying to get more consistent with uh you know like my load and you know just my mechanics um just kind of tweaking a lot of things, just trying to make it a little bit more smooth. Um, and that's been really beneficial so far. So Mr. Corona, um, one of our faithful listeners has a question for you because um, you said you're from New York. Yep. So he wants to know if you're from Western New York, were you a Yankees fan or a Mets fan? And do you enjoy the weather in Texas? <laughs> <laughs> um, growing up, I was definitely a Yankee fan because, uh, I used to go to the Indians games because it's actually closer to me, Cleveland, than uh, New York City. It's only like three hours. So I would always go there. I saw that game uh, with Jabba Chamberlain and I think Fausto Carmona with all the bugs around the face. That was wow. my first ever game. So that was pretty cool. Um, and then what was the second question again? The weather. Do you like the weather in Texas compared to New York? Or do you prefer New York weather? Oh. <laughs> much better in Texas. I'm looking outside right now and there's like a foot of snow on the ground. So, wow. Uh, I'm looking forward to get back into that warm weather and, you know, getting the armors. All right. So um, what, what does Sean Dubin enjoy doing his free time? Are you movies, shows? What type of, do you play video games? What do you do in your free time? Um, this time of the year, I like to, I like to hunt. Um, I did some bow hunting this year. Uh, been out a couple of times for gun season so far. Um, and then other than that, probably just play video games, you know, just, just hang out with friends. It's, it's just nice to, to spend time with them because I don't get to see them, you know, for most of the year. So, yeah. So, so uh, speaking of friends, I'm sure you've made a few friends, uh, with the AAA, uh, Sugarland Skeeters being right there. You've had a lot of rehabbing Astros there. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm sure, I think you had a Mr. Zach Grinke, um, there for a little bit. Um, what was that like? Uh, were you able to pick his brain a little bit on, uh, how to pitch or work with him at all? Unfortunately, I, I couldn't really get, or I didn't really, uh, have an opportunity to talk to him. Um, you know, I, looking back on it, I wish I would have pursued it a little harder because, uh, you know, just a vet of his caliber, you know, you just always want to pick his brain and, and, you know, try to get some, some little tips for, uh, for the future, but the whole process of it all, you know, it's really cool. Just seeing, seeing guys, like I said, of his caliber come down and, you know, just be interacting with the AAA guys, you know, it's, um, it's, it's a really cool experience. What, yeah. what about the other guys, like any of the other, uh, like, pitchers that have come down? Like, um, did Lance McCullers rehab? Yeah, at all? Lance, Lance yeah. was down. I think uh, Bregg was down. Um, yeah, Castro was down. You know, they're all good guys. They're really good guys. You know, they're they're super down to earth, and you know that's one thing the Astros really really harp on is just like 
a, a really solid clubhouse where everyone looks out for one another and you know they they do a good job at you know making sure the younger guys are are feeling comfortable and, and confident so you, you know you you had success this this last year you had some struggles here and there but in 2022 with you being protected with you being on the 40 man with you knowing that it's not a matter of if but when you get called up what do you like? How do you picture that? Have you have you tried to imagine what that's going to be like touching the mound for the first time, or is that something that you try to not even think about because you don't want to psych yourself out when you make your entrance into the big stage? Uh, yeah, I've thought about it a little bit. Um, just you know, just in the sense that like it would be awesome to have you know family and friends there watching for the first time, <clears throat> but uh. Overall, like I try not to harp on it, you know, because one of the it's one of those things where like when it happens, you know, you just try to soak in every, all that you can. Um, so I'm looking forward to that day, and uh, I'm really excited. Now I have a question. I know we're probably about to go to the Universal DH, so this question would be more apt if if playing in a National League park meant that hitters got to hit. But if you got to hit and you had a walk up song, what would be your walk up song? Ooh, or have you had one in any of your minor league? Because it's a DH all the way through, right? In AAA, I'm sorry, what was that? Is it a, is it a DH all the way through in AAA? I think so. If you're an American okay. League team, it's a DH. Okay. But I, okay. I'm pretty sure the the National League teams when they play against each other, um, they get the pitchers get to hit. So so what would be your walk up song if if you got to hit one day? What would you go with? Probably like some just hardcore like EDM song, something to get the juices flowing. You know, I'd sell out first pitch on a fastball, just <laughs> just a little leg lift and just turn and burn. But uh, but yeah, probably something just to get me juiced up a little bit, a little extra power if I do make contact. Well, I, I think that pitchers, if I remember correctly, like starting pitchers, I guess they have the walk up, they have their walk up music, so to speak. I think maybe not. yeah. Well, yeah, you know, whenever you're whenever you're starting the mound you have your music or actually bullpen, like, you know, like you're running bullpen. I remember um, Brad Lidge always had like this heavy metal, you know, Sandman, inner Sandman, inner inner Sandman was, um, Uh, was Billy Billy Wagner was Billy Wagner. But Hey, I'll tell you this, Dubin, whenever Brad Lidge was with the Astros, when he was lights out Lidge, all the lights would drop at Minute Maid Park and then fire would hit the ribbon like like boards on the side and like this hardcore metal would hit and Brad Lidge would run out and it was like like you you felt like you could run through a flaming brick wall when Brad Lidge <laughs> yeah. got on the mound. It was awesome. Yeah, so that's awesome. do you have it so do you have a song that you would want to come out to like pitching wise, would you do the same thing just to get the juices flowing or would you go with um, like I can feel it by uh by like Phil Collins. <laughs> <laughs> Jake Myers, like, all things down, walk right? out. we all yeah. always, we go nuts whenever whenever it plays. Everyone's singing along in the dugout, but um, I don't know. Like I'm not really a metal type of guy, but uh, I'd probably play that song where it's like "Let the Bodies Hit the Flow," yeah. <laughs> something yeah. like that. Something with like a hardcore, you know, nice. from the bullpen, just get everyone juiced up. There you go. I like it. All right, so I did this to Joe Perez earlier. Uh, what ha- it doesn't have to be from this year; it could be um, from any year time in baseball. What's your most embarrassing moment on the mound, and one one that you kind of wanted literally uh, put your head in the ground like ostrich? And what's what was your most awesome moment on the mound where you're just like, yeah? Um, the most embarrassing moment. Uh, I'm trying to think. Um, I'm pretty sure when I was in Fayetteville at one time, I just like I tried pulling down on a fastball as hard as humanly possible, and I, I'm pretty sure I sailed it like ten feet over the catcher's head. Um, luckily, knock on wood, I haven't had like any box or anything like that, so um, nothing like that stands out too bad. But if that's probably like the only time. And then, what was the middle question? I uh, just what was your best um, moment on the mound? What was your best moment on the mound? Um, the best moment, I think was probably either this year in playoffs or in Fayetteville, you know, um, you know, once you get, once you get in those playoffs and it was, I got to pitch on uh, the game five, you know, it was two, two in the series and I came out against down East and, you know, really had success. And then even this year, you know, just being able to throw in the playoffs, it's, it's such a cool feeling, you know, you have all this extra adrenaline, you know, you're playing for something. So. 
So this last year, you you saw guys like Jake Myers, Jose Siri. You saw guys like that, you know, go up to the big leagues. And then you had guys come in like Hunter Brown, Corey Lee. Um, what's that like for you guys? Because it seems like you would think in the minor leagues that when you lose talent, that, okay, you know, we're going to kind of drop off a little bit. We're not going to have as much. But it, it, it was almost like y'all retooled. It's like you lost a guy, but you gained another guy. You lost like De La Cruz. That was huge. And then you gained another guy. What, what was – what is that like to see the talent continue to come through? And even as a pitcher, you know, you got the offense to back you up. Um, it's, it's really cool. You know, I think that the Astros do a phenomenal job just organizationally or organizationally. Um, like everyone at every level, you know, they're all studs. Um, you know, the guys we had come up to Sugarland this year, they were all the dudes in, in Corpus, you know, they all had a lot of success. So, um, you know, just, just knowing that if someone does go up, that spot's going to get filled by someone, you know, worthy of that caliber, you know, it just makes everything easier. And especially just offensively, you know, the hitters themselves, we, they're studs, especially you got guys like Pena, Myers, Siri, you know, that's, uh, it really makes you more relaxed on the mound. So I'll tell you this, Sean, since I'm a, since I'm a betting man and I use betonline.ag, I'm going to find out if there's an, if there's some odds on, on guys coming up to the pros from Sugarland. And if your name's in there, I'm going to put my money on you because I know you're going to make it there, buddy. It's, I it, you know, it. I, yeah, Thanksgiving is over. And I mean, football's still here, but we got the NBA. We've got baseball season coming up. There's all kinds of sports action going on, right? This is Bet Online. It's the number one spot for all sports. It has updated desktop or mobile website that's phenomenal. You sign up today, 50% welcome bonus. Use the promo code locked on to receive your bonus. It's not just football. Bet Online has pro, college hoops, NHL boxing, UFC, and your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet online, we're stuffed with deals this holiday season. And guys, thank you for making Locked on Astros podcast your first listen every day. Whether it's on YouTube, keep on liking, keep on subscribing. And whether you're, it's, you're listening on your way to work, on your way home from work, uh, keep on listening to the audio version um, on Odyssey, Apple, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast. Keep on listening to Locked on Astros podcast. Okay, so you brought up uh, Jeremy Pena. There's a lot of uh, discussion going on, Sean, about who is the Astros shortstop with the possible uh, um, departure of Carlos Correa as a free agent. Uh, they still haven't filled it, and um, they they may go out and get a stopgap until Jeremy Pena is ready. Tell us a little bit about Jeremy Pena as a pitcher. Sure. Is he great defensively? What, what can you tell us about him defensively? Yeah, you know, just all good things to say about him. Me and him, uh, we got drafted together. You know, we were playing in Tri City, or uh, Quad City, Fayetteville. You know, we, we came up together. So, just just knowing he's behind you when you're on the mound at shortstop, you know, it's, it's super relieving. He makes some some phenomenal plays, and uh, just makes it look so easy. And um, especially uh, his power. You know, this year, you know, people in Sugarland got a little taste of it. You know, he was. What, when he got back from that injury, you know, he just went off. So just knowing you have that offensive presence along with the defensive side, you know, it just it just makes life a lot easier. So um, I want to I want to ask you something from one of our from one of our fans um, or I'm sorry, one of our followers. He says, if you had to face someone from the Skeeters, who do you think would be an easy out? Now, I know that'd be, I, I guess equivalent to smack talk um or who do you think would be a tough out are you willing to answer the first one because i don't know if they catch wind of this i don't know if if, if you want to um, talk to them in the clubhouse but is there guys that you would rather face than others or not yeah i can't say any names there's definitely guys that i'd rather face but um i'll answer the second question the hardest guy um Honestly, Jake Myers, um, you know, especially last year at the alt site, you know, I had to go against him probably like 20, 30 times. And it was just a struggle, like, uh, like to like lock in every every pitch against him. Because if, if you leave anything middle, you know, he's got such a smooth swing. Um, my biggest fear to him was like hanging a slider and just having him park it left field. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he sure did well. He impressed a lot of people at the major league level too. So I know that mm -hmm. he is part of the Astros' future, 
um, as well. And he, he took um, a lot of us by surprise. So um, yeah. go ahead and tell us a little bit uh, about you. What's the last uh, movie you watched? Last movie I watched, um, Red Notice. I just watched it on uh, on Netflix. I guess it just dropped. I don't. I wanted to see what it's all about. They had like a star-studded cast on there. It, yeah. it was good. I was expecting yeah. a little better, to be honest, but it was all right. I've so tried bro, to watch it several times, and I haven't gotten mm-hmm. past um, yeah. like thirty. I mean, it's not that it's bad. Just I keep on getting distracted. Brett. So, um, so growing up in New York, were you a hockey player? No, I snowboarded instead of playing hockey. You snowboarded. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. But were you a hockey fan? Yeah, um, my whole family is hockey fans. You know, we got diehard Sabres fans here. Um, I played. A, I, tr- I tried playing a couple times. Um, you know, I can get going pretty fast on skates, but I, I can't stop. So I just end up <laughs> smashing into the boards, you know. So I can't really do that anymore because last thing I need is to run into the boards and mess up the shoulder or something. So, so what we need you to do when you when you make it to Minute Maid, you need to in, you need to invite Tillman Fertitta, the owner of the Rockets, and tell him we need an NHL team in Houston. So we need a we need we need someone from up north to tell him that's a, that's very important. Okay, so you need to, yeah. you need to get on the NHL to Houston campaign with us. Yeah, no, I got you. Hockey's <laughs> hockey's huge up here, so um, maybe I could sell him on that aspect. It's like an untapped market down there in a sense. It is. All right. So this is something I always do with the prospects. Uh, this doesn't have to do with um, you as a pitcher, but what are three things that make you Sean Dubin? Um, three things. Honestly, just being trying to be like relaxed all the time. Um, I'm a, I'm a pretty like tranquil person in a sense. Um, I don't really get fired up unless I'm pitching, you know, that's the only time. Um, also just like, you know, talking to family and friends, you know, it's a big part of my life. Um, it helps to balance me, especially, you know, those eight month or eight month seasons, you know, it's a long time being away from the family. So, um, you know, just being able to talk to them and, you know, hopefully having them come out to games, you know, it just, it all helps. Um, and then the other one is video games. I love playing video games. It's like kind of my way to, to come down, you know, especially after, after a long day at the field, um, it's also a great way to connect, like I said, with friends and everything. So, so it, so you know, going back to the baseball thing, who is the one coach that this last year you felt has helped you the most with working on things, getting you more fine tuned? Is it is it someone at Sugarland? Was it before you got to Sugarland? But who who's the coach that's made the biggest impression on you? You said in this past year. Yeah, yeah, in this past year. So I guess it would be in Sugarland. Um. Probably either Bill Murphy or Eric Abreu. You know, Abreu, um, you know, he, he helped me a lot with, with things this year, you know, especially coming off the injury. Um, you know, it was up and down to start, and he just told me, he's like, just be confident in your stuff, you know, just, you know, just throw everything through the zone. And, you know, he worked with me a lot during, like, um, my, my bullpens throughout the week. So, um, you know, that was very beneficial and it helped out a lot. And then, like I said, Bill Murphy, he, uh, he's always checking in, um, always giving you tips, you know, some things that you might have been doing wrong your last, your last outing or something that if you just change, you know, ever so slight, it'll, it'll generate better outcomes. I just want to mention this real quick. Um, Sean, you can speak on this if you want to, but John Gray just signed a four-year deal with the Texas Rangers. Uh, so um, that's a pretty big move for them. Uh, does this make them a team that the Astros should be worried about? Sean, they got Marcus Simeon. They got uh, Cole Calhoun. Is that a team that the Astros should be worried about, or do they still have a few pieces they need to take care of? Um, you know, they're always a really good team, you know, just judging, especially off their AAA team, you know, they got a lot of young guys as well that can, they can fill spots. Um, but now that they added that caliber, um, they're probably trying to make a statement this year. So I, I can see them coming out aggressive and, you know, those, what's it called? The in-state rivalry again, Texas against Texas. Um, that, that should be fun to watch this year. Yeah. The silver yeah, boot. I, yeah. The silver boot, which which a lot of people joke, well, um, we you can have the silver like y'all got the silver boot because we've we've got a six ALCS to go to, and so yeah, Eric's got the silver boot bobblehead. Um, so going into next season, Sean, what is what is the one what is the one thing that you feel like you need to work on the most? Um, just consistency consistency with my changeup. Um, you know, just 
this past uh these past couple of weeks you know i found i found it like getting closer and closer to where i want it especially like shape wise you know um but just just having the confidence and you know just flat out the ability to throw it in any count that's kind of my number one goal this year I th i'm happy with all my other shapes and and pitches so um definitely just improving command with that and just being able to throw it to both sides of the plate yeah. So, um, Brett, you got any other questions? No, I just, you know, Sean, thank you for joining us. We are looking forward to watching you in Sugarland. I'm definitely going to be down there again to try to catch some games before you get up to Minute Maid. And then when you get to Minute Maid, we're going to be sending a shout out like Sean Dubin. And like, hopefully you'll, you'll recognize us and you won't like big league us. Um, oh, when you never, get to the never, when you get to no. the juice box, so thank you for coming on. Uh, this is the second time that I've gotten to talk to you, and it's always been a pleasure. Um, I appreciate you. I know Eric appreciates you joining the show tonight. We've never done back to back live interviews, and it went phenomenal. You're always welcome, and um, we look forward to a continued conversation. We look forward to your continued success with the Skeeters and soon to be Houston Astros pitcher. I appreciate it. Thank you again for having me on. All right, guys, thank you for making Locking On Astros podcast your first listen every day. And uh, we did just drop another podcast talking about all the moves over the weekend. And we did address the Marcus Simeon move and what is the um, move for Hector Neris move mean for the Houston Astros and uh, the luxury tax threshold. We talked about this and we just uh, dropped it on YouTube. And uh, once again, thank you for uh, making Locked On Astros podcast uh, your first listen. Sean Dubin, thank you for joining us. and. Uh, Ghost Rose, and we'll be back tomorrow with another Locked on Astros podcast and Ghost Rose.